Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Dizzle. This was sent to me by Stronghold Games, and is designed by Ralph Zerlind. Get Dizzled! Players place dice on their game sheet and fields with corresponding pips. At the end of each round, the fields are crossed out. The more fields that are crossed out, the more points and special actions players accumulate. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins Dizzle. Sounds simple, right? Wait until another player bombs your sheet. Let me show you how to play. So in Dizzle, you're placing dice on fields uh, with the matching number of pips on your game sheet. At the end of each of your turn, those fields get marked with an X with one of these pens, and you'll start to collect more and more X's on your sheets. And some of these fields, as you can see, enable special actions or give you extra points. Uh, whoever has the most points at the end wins. There are four levels of difficulty. Uh, you can see this is level one. There's a level two on here. We also have level three and level four. And they give you a whole booklet. Yeah, Sophie? Yeah, I agree. Uh, a whole booklet of uh, levels here. Depending on the number of players, different numbers of dice are needed. Uh, one player is eight dice, two players seven, three players 10, four players 13. The number of rounds is also dependent. One player is 10 rounds, two players six, three players four, and four players three. And as the starting player, you just go ahead and you roll all the dice. After you roll the dice, you tick off this round marker here. And once everyone has done this, then it's the next round. Now, once you've rolled your dice, you sort them in ascending order. Actually, this really works out. There's only threes and fours here. Um, but if this had been like a different spread, you would just sort them accordingly. Then in a clockwise direction, beginning with the starting player, each player takes exactly one die and puts it on a field on their game sheet. But the following rules have to be observed. The die must be put on an unused field, meaning one that does not contain an X. Also, the field has to match the number of pips. So I couldn't put this four on this six pace. I could only put it actually right here to start. And the first die that you choose has to be chosen horizontally or vertically next to any field that has already been crossed out. So in the beginning, you only have these two fields, meaning what your dice has to be one of these uh, six spaces here. Then the next die that you pick has to be horizontally or vertically next to a die that is already on the field. So you make a connected dice cluster. So this would be a little interesting with only threes and fours. On my next turn, I might want to grab a three uh, and put that here because that's the only way with the threes and fours that I could do that. And you must take a die and play it if possible. Now, if there are dice remaining after every player has taken a die, then the starting player takes another die. You just keep taking die until a player's turn is over. A player's turn is over when none of the other players can take a die or want to roll again. Now, at a certain point, when you are no longer able to place dice, like as you can see, there's only three and two fours left, and there are no spaces next to dice that can uh, fit those, then you have an option. You can either roll again or drop out. If you decide to roll again, you take the remaining dice and you roll them. If you are able to place a die, you must place it. In this case, a six is placeable either here or here. Uh, either way, they have to place that dice. However, if none of the dice rolled were placeable, they would have to return one of the dice on their sheet as a penalty and the value of the die that is returned must not be changed but if you decided to roll again you stay in the game or the round no matter what the results are when it's your time to choose again you can take a die or decide to roll again if you can't take any of the dice otherwise if you're like i don't want to risk rolling and you know losing my die off my sheet you can drop out you just put your pen down uh and whoever is still rolling uh stays in the game now, when all players but one have dropped out, like let's say player one dropped out and there's these, these uh, three left, then the last active player has one more opportunity to choose a die. They can take a die from the table, roll again, or drop out. Uh, but once they make their choice, that round is over for everyone. So let's say these uh, three dice were placed. Once everyone has dropped out or there are no more dice on the table, uh, you then put X's wherever you have dice. Then you start a new round, roll the dice again, and uh, put some, um, place some more dice and keep going. Once all the rounds have been played, you award points. You add points for special fields, which I'll explain later. Minus points for bombs and brown piles. And whoever earns the most points wins the game. If there's a tie, whoever has fewer X's on their sheet wins. Now one mechanic I haven't explained yet is jumping. Uh, what jumping is, is let's say we have, um, let's say these X's were crossed out and I placed a five in here. Now you'll notice there's no other fields that are next to this dice. So now at this point, the next die they place can jump anywhere on the field next to an X. 
So if there was like another five, I could jump here. Or if there was a one, I could jump here. But this is the only way you can uh, separate your die cluster is if you strategize it and close this off perfectly. Or another way, like let's say these two are here and you placed a one and a two. Then the next die you place can go anywhere next to an X as long as it's the correct pips. That essentially starts as a, new, as a starting die. And so the die after this would have to be next to this die. But uh, otherwise, yeah, that's an interesting way to fill in little gaps. Now let's go over some of the uh, special spaces in level one. These gemstone spaces for each X you have on these, these are plus three points at the end of the game. If you manage to fill out a complete row with an arrow, uh, this would give you 10 points. Uh, this column here would give you five, 10, five, 10, five, as you can see listed here. Puzzle pieces, if you cross out both of these by the end of the game, you'll get plus 10 points or whatever it says for that. And the bomb, if you put an X on a bomb, then everyone else has to put a, a scribble mark on their sheet. Uh, and those will be bad at the end, minus two points. If two or more players cross out bombs, at the same end of turn, uh, then they both get to do an X, while the other players have to do explosions, get minus two points for each explosion. If we look at level twos here, there's a little more going on. If you notice on level two, there's different colored puzzle pieces, like green ones and blue ones, different gems. Uh, but the new mechanic on here is the keys. Uh, if you have an X on a key, only then are you able to place a dice on the respective lock color. Um, so if I, and it doesn't mean if I have a dice on it, it means there has to be an X on it. If there's an X on it, then I can finally put a dice on this uh, keyhole for the correct color. Level three introduces the rocket. When you cross out a rocket uh, the, at the end of your turn, you get to put an X on a planet field of your choice. So if I cross this rocket out at the end of my turn, then I could put an X on this planet. Flags are sort of like a race. If you put an X on a flag on your turn and nobody else has, then you get to circle the first number here while everyone else would have to cross theirs out. Then the second player to cross out a flag would get to do the next number and so on. If more than one player gets the flag on the same turn, then they both get that number of points. And then if we look at level four here, oh, we got some poop spaces on here. Also note that there are two different flags uh, and also three blue puzzle pieces. And if you notice, there are spaces that you actually can't get to unless you use a rocket to get there. Also in level four, if you manage to cross out all, all four spaces in this special box here, that's plus 10 points. Uh, and then finally, the brown piles. These are minus points at the end of the game if you cross them out. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. You roll the dice and you alternate taking the dice and you're trying to do as much efficient placement as possible uh, and getting as many X's as you can and crossing out and getting effects. I love how simple this game is to play, but there's some interesting strategy going on as well. That first die placement for each round is very important because like if I place this here, the next die has to be next to that die. So there's always this risk element of, should I grab this die first so my opponents can't grab it? Because there's a chance that they'll grab it and I'm stuck. Uh, so there's a fun drafting element to the game. Jumping is a really satisfying mechanic. It's got a nice kind of combo feel if you can like, okay, I can fill in this little gap and then I can jump to this cluster uh, in a turn. And then you develop this habit of like leaving holes on your board so that later you can fill them in and jump out of them later. Giving the player the option to roll again or drop out is also a really fun kind of risk management mechanic. Because sometimes it can be used to your advantage to get rid of a die from a poop space. Like, uh, okay, I'm going to intentionally roll the dice and uh, uh, fail, but then I can remove it from this stupid space. Or maybe you're reckless. Maybe you're just like, okay, I just wanna go put as many dice on the board as I can. Either way, it can be really funny <laughs> watching somebody constantly lose their die because they won't stop trying to roll the dice and roll the dice. What's nice though, is that with careful enough planning, you don't have to worry about depending on luck constantly. If you see what dice are on the general display, you can go, okay, try to plan so that these dice can be placed as long as people don't uh, fuck it up. I think all levels of the game are a lot of fun. I'd recommend at least level two because it gives you more interesting decisions to make and bonuses, but even level one is enjoyable. This has the aesthetic and feel of like a classic, you know, PC Minesweeper or uh, the old game Chips Challenge with its iconography and simplicity. All the symbols make sense and you can remember them pretty easily and there's a nice little scoring chart. 
The only minor downside to the game is sometimes it can feel a little automated because you have to take die if you're able to. So it's like, okay, well, I have to take this. All right, my turn. Okay, I have to take this. But there's also the satisfaction of I planned out this turn very well and I'm getting every die I want right in a row. Uh, it can be very satisfying in that way. Plus, covering as many X's as you can on your turn is always good in a way. Overall, it's a clever take on the write and roll genre. Uh, it's very spatial, which I like, and it's super easy to teach, especially if you start with level one or level two. But as, uh, we, we played like, we know, a one through four in a row, and uh, you know, it's not that much more complicated in between levels. So nothing too crazy there. Uh, otherwise, it's very satisfying to watch your X's grow all over the board and start covering more and more bonus bases. Overall, it's a really fun game and I recommend it. It's good stuff.